I am unashamed. What about you? So, I mean, we're, what are we, two weeks from duck season? But me and you fixed to crank it up early. Because we're going to make a road trip. We're, Phil and I, we're, we're going to make a old fashioned road trip because the weather. By the way, Miss K has one that's already paid for. She, has one she, what? Airplane. And if you just want to go without an hour, she said, I've already got it all lined up. It's already well, been paid. Well, now you're speaking my language. Yeah. Well, I'm just oh, saying. I thought we were doing a road trip. I guess we're doing an well, air trip. I, I, Ooh, air I told her better. about the road trip, and she said, well, I've already got the next trip, plane trip, paid for. And it's mm. it's available if y'all want it. And I'm like, well, I'll no, do. I'm like, this, this is, is getting, getting better. This, this trip is, is getting better. So we may. It's an hour by airplane or six hours, seven hours by oh, about eight, about eight, eight hours. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm in on that. Well, there you go. Uh, I good. love it that our audience just got to witness <laughs> <laughs> good some fresh material here. I didn't know. I didn't know how you were going to take that, but I said I'm prepared to do either. No, nobody said, turns down a free plane ride. I'm going to tell you that right now. No, well, last uh, time we tried it and we got the thing. An hour later, we're sitting there and we're we're in Kansas. Let's go. Oh, oh I'm loading my gun in an hour. And we actually shot a limit of ducks that day, which was awesome. Yeah. Well, usually we don't go north i mean hunt early because the ducks are not down but this year i mean this is a cold front it's going to be 22 here monday for all the global warming uh, theorists <laughs> i would just simply say are we running yeah uh <laughs> for all the global warming theorists i would just simply tell them in august everybody was jumping up and down and squealing because we had record bre- record breaking heat yeah, and well, let's see. August left, then August, September, October. Within two months, we looked up, and now it's going into November. This is the coldest it's ever been in a particular number of states. And I'm like, uh, y'all were jumping up and down thrills. It looked like when global warming, the temperatures. This is the hottest it's ever been. What are we going to do? Now well, it's, the it's, it, it's been yeah. two and a half months, and now it's the coldest it's ever been. I haven't seen it get down to 22 degrees. And and just going into November in last Louisiana, time. yeah, I, I don't ever remember a, a twenty two in November this early no. before duck season. No, never. And so never. now they're talking about Colorado broke all the record record cold, but I noticed they said it. They did. They it, they hated to say it. I'm just saying, average them all up. How much warmer is it than two hundred and fifty years ago when they first started counting? They said one degree change, but it was one degree warmer. No, but see, you're behind down on your terminology because it was global. They don't hear global warming now. You hear climate change. So what? Yeah. So if I was AOC to your, you know, denier, she would say, "No, this is exactly what happens. Everything to the extreme. Everything it's to heat the to the extreme and cold. What, what this is, is all because is of climate AOC? change." What is that? That's uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Yeah. She's kind of the leading voice now. I don't. I never heard of her. Oh yeah, she's the cute Marxist, is what Dad calls her. She's in the weather. Seriously, where do y'all see that? She's a weather woman. Well, she claims she is, <laughs> she, but but they think in cows she's passing a, gas is going to alter the twenty three and a half degree tilt of planet Earth. Where, where do y'all see this stuff at? Huh? Oh, it's where? out there, Josh. You just got to look for it. Yeah, <laughs> cows passing gas. <laughs> do what? <laughs> I have no idea. Josh, you need to get off get off the stock market. <laughs> And start paying attention to what's going on around here. <laughs> Jay's missed I mean, out Phil, on the, of he, all the things I've heard. So there's a group dad called Tac Pack. Uh, they provide military tactical, and they they call it. It's really built for Second Amendment enthusiasts. Oh well, we qualify. Would you consider yourself a Second Amendment enthusiast? I, I think I fall under that category. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all do at this table for sure. And I bet a bunch of our uh, watchers and listeners do as well. Mm-hmm. So for forty nine ninety five a month, they're going to ship you basically $100 worth of gear. So you're getting half price off of the stuff they send you. Uh, you get AR-15 parts, which, by the way, Beto's out of the race. So I guess our AR-15s are safe, right? Oh, I hate to see him go. He was he was going to get he was going to uh, have a buyback. Yeah, all your yeah. AR fifteen. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know who that is. Yeah. So. Well, there you go. There's another one. Jay's it's not him. His real name. He just threw that in there for politics. <laughs> That's exactly right. You get knives, cleaning kits. You get a mix of other tactical gear. 
Uh, so every time, what's fun is it's like Christmas every month. And apparel. Uh, yeah, a box shows up. Uh, and so you're going to get all these different things. So this was our box that showed up this month. Let's see, because we're all members. Here we've got a, Ooh, what is a that? A sling. Sling. Explain that, Jace, what that is. I don't know. i gotta, I got to take a look-see. Okay. This one, Dad, is a, trying to figure out what we got here. This is mine here, because I just ripped it open. It's like a gun Jace sling, is already Oh, gun sling. Yeah. Carry your weapon. Oh, yeah, these are little parts here for AR. Well, if you've ever tried to climb a tree with a weapon, you would understand. Here's an extended mag release. Oh, good. It's got the little tools and everything you're going to need to put it on. Anti-walk pins that you get right here. So these are the kind of things that you're going to get. Uh, sometimes they got a knife in there in them. Sometimes they got a lot of different kind of gear. You get a sling. I mean, this is pretty good quality. I'm, I'm going to have to admit. Great so, quality. You're not yeah. going to break that in your lifetime. Well, it says war machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, look, the December pack that's coming up is a special Christmas pack. It's worth $270 worth of gear, which, remember, you're going to get for forty nine ninety five. So you got a lot of cool stuff in there. TACPAC.com, use the promo code PHIL, P-H-I-L, and you're going to get a free mystery bag of tactical goodies. And they're going to ship out around the same time as your first TAC Pack. So you're going to get this bonus Christmas. Uh, if you go ahead and sign up right now, TACPAC.com, offer code is PHIL, uh, and start getting your boxes today. I love it. Every month's like Christmas for me. And we're going to get double Christmas. Awesome. Say that again. They think tr- cows exactly passing right. gas is what? D- destroying the ozone, and that's why the Earth going to end and the cosmos is over in 11 years. We and don't le- have 11 what are they years. doing fooling years. around a cow pen, testing that kind of stuff anyway? And look, so look, and they're, they're now saying, look, we've got to implement less beef. You know, I mean, they're like wanting to curtail it at the well, how, retail end. If we, how, how you do, would need a hamburger – it, then we wouldn't have to worry about all this ozone. I, I can't mean, believe these people didn't get shot. Can you imagine? Fuels, fossil fuels, the burning of coal, coal-powered coal plants, the burning of fossil fuels takes away the ozone, and that's why we're going to burn up in the next 11 years. Now, the temperature hasn't changed, but one degree. Peter said they're a little off because they predicted in 11 years, but the apostle Peter said the day of the Lord will come like a thief. That yeah. means... We don't know when the end of the cosmos is, but I know this. Here's the story, uh, Ocasio-Cortez, for you. <laughs> it's a biblical view. I don't even know who this person uh, is. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. Here comes Jesus back. He's already came down 2018 years ago in flesh, died on a cross, been buried and raised from the dead, stayed 40 days, went back into heaven. He's coming back according to this, and when he comes, the heavens will disappear with a roar. Yeah. Now, this end of time and it has nothing to do with the cows passing gas. The <laughs> elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it laid bare. This is the end of everything. Now watch. Of the earth. So, yeah, since, and, the, and the cosmos, the stars, the planets. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live, Ocasio-Cortez, uh, you ought to live a holy and godly life as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. The day, that day, here comes Jesus, will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But we're global, looking forward but- to new heavens and a new earth, the home of righteousness. Here's the point. You say, we're not going to destroy it and neither are it cows passing gas. God says, no, you're not going to destroy it. I am. God is saying, I am going to rid the cosmos of what you now see and planet earth i'm going to give you new heavens and a new earth and there we'll spend an eternity and True. we never have to worry about but wouldn't anything. that be global warming right then this will be extreme global heating <laughs> Cosm- cosmos wide extreme yeah. heating which yeah. is why yeah we believe in it we just believe it's a divine origin therefore here's the text hebrews chapter one in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. It's interesting because when this was written in the first century, when all these books were written, God has not said a word to us via revelation through the prophets. That's all in the past. We're in the last days. 
because in these last days he spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom, listen, he made the universe. He made the universe. And watch this. The Where son, are you at? I'm in Hebrews chapter 1. Yeah. The Son is the radiance of God's glory. He's the exact representation of his being. He sustains all things by his powerful word. After, here's the gospel, he had provided purification for sins. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, which we're famous for, proclaiming that. After he provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. The only way he could have sat down at the majesty in heaven, he had to be resurrected. So he's talking about his death, burial, and resurrection, which we proclaim to the world. Therefore, he gets down to verse 8, your throne, talking about what he established, O God, will last forever and ever, irregardless of the weather. We're going to be ready for a new heavens and a new earth. Watch. Your throne will last forever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom which he established, repent, for the kingdom is yeah. near, it's near. Jesus dies, is buried, raised from the dead, goes back into heaven. We need to talk about that one day. The kingdom's here. That's right. We're You've loved righteousness that. and hated wickedness, therefore your God has set you above the companions. Now watch this. He says in verse 10, well, what about planet Earth and the cosmos and are the cows passing gas going to do it in? In the beginning, O oh Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. We don't believe it came from some kind of large explosion without God being there. You say, what exploded? How did it get here? God says through the Hebrew writer, God says, I made the cosmos and I made the earth. <clears throat> they, listen carefully, will perish, Ocasio-Cortez, the heavens and the earth. They will perish but you remain. They, heavens and earth, will all wear out like a garment. It's called, if you want to know what our scientists, they didn't discover this to the mid-1800s. That's He's, not in here. Oh, the, you're the last thing. I'm, I'm just saying okay. what we call it, our scientists, is the second law of thermodynamics. You say, what does that say? It, we're losing energy. It's all losing. It's winding down. Sure. Well, the Hebrew writer knew about the second law of thermodynamics. He 2,000 years ago. The prophets and, and the Hebrew writer said, Where's oh, this it's leaving. Where's this quote from? He, that's a quote <laughs> Psalms in Psalms 102, Jason. Yeah, that's what I was looking So there, for. you were just back, back another 1,000 years, by the way. That's right. The so 1,000 years before this was written, God had already predicted this through the psalmist. God is going to destroy the planet. The human race is not going to destroy it via burning fossil fuels and cows passing gas. You remain and your years will never end. And he's going to set up, I read with Peter a while ago, the apostle, a new heavens and a new earth. If you made one cosmos with a planet we're on, Al, you could just make another one. In a, the in reason a twinkling we of an eye. Well, the reason we follow Jesus is that gives us great hope. Right. We don't have to worry about fossil fuels and burning and all of that and the heating. No. That's we think all. about though, Dad. So, so everybody the in this, ungodly came up with everybody that. in this discussion. You just said it. That's it. None of these people have most. I'd say none. Probably ninety five percent of these people have no consciousness of God. The Bible. Everything you just read and said. They've never even heard of that. They don't even know what's the kingdom is here. No, no, no. Three members of the kingdom are seated right at this table. And if you try to convince people, even in the religious world, they'd say, you're who? But dad, they don't understand why we're not panicking. And we're just like, because we believe what the Bible says. I'm going back to this. What do they come up on a ranch and say, we want to test these cows? I mean, how do you come up with the conclusion that cows passing gas is somehow you another on, hey, You only can come up with that conclusion if God has given you over to a depraved mind. No, I'm just saying you become You become senseless, faithless, no God, senseless meaning nonsense is coming out of your mouth. Ocasio-Cortez, you say, so how do you end up with cows passing gas? Because it's nonsense. Jace, but the mean, thing I is just... tilted at 23 and a half degrees and it gives us fall that we're now entering, it, the temperature is dropping. It doesn't make any difference how much gas the cow's passing. The tilt says it's yeah. fixing to be fall, and then it's going to be winter, and then it's going to be spring, and then it's going to be summer. 
and the temperature is going to vary according to the tilt. But it the it the tilt I was is just not based on fossil fuels. Where field. this came from? Since I I know, don't know the seems. scientific uh, data gathering process they go through. I'm I sure. mean, every rancher and farmer I know, and I know a lot because I hunt places where cows gather. Yep. They would not let somebody come in and test. They'd say, they, I'm sure yeah, they're saying here. they're testing this at the higher. I don't know how the cow farts became a part of the carbon. They call it carbon emission. So, you know, what goes out of that plane carbon that you guys will take emission. up to Kansas, yeah. that that combined with the it gas. It came forth from nonsensical thing. By the <laughs> way, several more, Jay, so you'll just know. A little text in passing that – that uh, proves the second law of thermodynamics was alive and well, not only when the psalmist a thousand years before Jesus, after Jesus came, watch. This world, this is 1 Corinthians 7, verse 31. This world in its present form is passing away. All of our scientists agree with that assessment. They know that cold and heat Bouncing off each other, it's losing energy. They know that this thing is finite. It's not going to last forever. It's winding down. The sun is losing some of its energy every year. They're monitoring all this. Oh, yeah. You say they call it the second law of thermodynamics, but God was writing about. But they're saying how- we're contributing to that. Like in other words, because we're so selfish and drive cars and eat hamburgers and flying planes. It's already winding down, and we know the universe will not be here. All the greatest scientists and the greatest minds we have, they know that the second law of thermodynamics proves the earth and all of the cosmos is winding down energy-wise. We're losing energy. The thing about that, if it wasn't uh, made to last forever. So, Dad, are you, um, are you sick and tired of overpriced greeting cards that really don't say what you want them to say? Greeting cards? Yeah. I mean, is this a problem in your life that the greeting cards you buy for us and mom? Huh. And Have you be- ever bought a greeting card? I've never bought a greeting card. You need card. to do that before you I've never die. been in a structure that sells greeting cards. At one time, there were a lot of greeting cards with your picture on them. You've never been? been yeah. I, hang on. You've never been in a structure. <laughs> Would it was something like, have you seen this man? Was it one of them kind of deals? What a statement. Um, greeting card. I, 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 I should send more cards to people, but I just never have got around well, let's, to do it. Let's start with one. So what's the, the yeah? So what's the point of well? So question? so here, here. Let me explain. This. Here's what people do in our society. If you care for somebody, you get them a card and you send them a little note and say, "Hey, pal, like what you do." Everybody I've ever seen that did that are women. No men. Well, do. you're. Oh you know, yeah, I, I buy I, I cards. Buy, I do too. I see women. Yeah receiving and giving little cards. Well, trust me, I'm not a woman. (laughs) Men do it too. That's what I'm saying. I I buy cards all the time, especially if they're funny. So here's the deal. So Jason and I, we we buy greeting cards. We have been into structures that sell greeting cards. Look, let me tell you this. You could could get Kay, get her a card, a greeting card, with some kind of sexual undertone. And look, you're talking about romance. Not, Not just obvious. Don't, you know, I'm not talking about, I'm just saying it'll it'll spruce up your life, you know. Yeah, I don't think it takes a <laughs> card to pull that off. <laughs> so, so we got some friends that that that, that is a, a company called Patriot Penguin, and so they're the first and only greeting company card, a greeting card company uh, for conservatives that are humorous, which is pretty good. Well, here we go. They because may have, let's yeah. face it, most of what you see and I see, most of it's kind of stupid and lame and, you know, you're just looking past it. And you find a few humorous things. Most of them are left-leaning. Does that surprise you? I mean, you know, you, they make fun of Trump, they, you know, whatever. Yeah. So now we got the Patriot Penguin. So whether it's birthdays or holidays, they call it a huge selection of cards that are going to trigger all the snowflakes out here. So I, I love this. I love the idea. So do they have some husband wife? Uh, oh, everything. Right. Tones of. Uh, I don't know. I have to ask them about their, uh, you know, romantic qualities. Tell them to. Uh, I'll. I'll. They could hire me for a, to be a writer. There you go. Here's a writer right here for Patriot Penguin. So look, if you go to Make Greeting Cards Great. Make greeting cards great again.com. That's a long title. Make greeting cards great again.com. If you go there right now, you save 15%. And here's what's interesting use the 
the offer code of Phil, who who oh. has who has told us that he's is, never bought a greeting card in his life. That is very interesting. Out. We got to convert you on this. You you need to do that. It's a bucket list moment. It I, is. I wrote down for your mother at her request because the question was, she's standing over my bed. Do you love me? And I'm like. Yeah. So you know that was her she, greeting card. You know card. why she's asking you that? Because you've never given her <laughs> given a her greeting a card. card. Well, anyway, the next one, I got up and a piece of paper in my chair. I got it and, and a, with a pen there. And I said, well, good, that, that woman wants me to write this down. It was just a piece of paper and a pen. I'm drinking a cup of coffee. Well, that's a start. So <laughs> I sat down. I love you, Miss Kay. You know, I always have. But anyway, she posted that on the bed. But but I tend to just write something down on a piece of paper. Right. If I need so it. So here's then what, what happened. Do. So here's Never what I thought about do. the card. Then aspect. what happened? You got lucky, didn't you? Hey. <laughs> so we're gonna get with Dad. We're gonna go to make greeting cards great again dot com. We're gonna put in Phil and we're gonna get fifteen percent off. You can do the same thing. Make greeting cards great again dot com. Offer fill, save fifteen percent. Got to do it before December fifteenth, so this covers Christmas, everything else. I'm gonna do this. Great greeting cards, and we're gonna take Phil online, and call? he's gonna get his first greeting card. Patriot yeah. Penguin. Patriot Penguin. Where's that? At? I just read you First uh, Corinthians seven, the, the last part of verse thirty one. This he just makes a point. People get all involved in worldly matters. He oh, said, yeah. "Listen, this world in its present form." Is passing away. Well, oh, if you yeah. read carefully what Peter said, he's going to do away with the current pre- uh, heavens and earth. They're already on their demise, with right. their way out. <clears throat> By the way, that's why they know it, it hasn't been here forever, or it would have already been gone. Right. Well, it's say, like the sun, it's burning. So that demands a question. Literally burning up. Well, it's burning up, but if something's burning, that means it had to start burning. Just just sit there and think about that a while. You are correct. It can't just, you can't say it's always been burning. It Well, something lit the fire. Yeah. But think about it. From these people's perspective, if the only hope you had was in the longevity of the planet and the resources here, and you're thinking, oh, no, what are we going to do? And these people are, I'm, I'm serious. There's, That's why there's so many doomsday movies. Oh, they're saying in a dozen years. That, that's right. I mean, this I, this is being repeated consistently right. now. In a dozen years or less, the whole thing, we're going to all die because of the climate. And, yeah. But they, the, here's the difference. We're saying, well, okay, if that happens, then that's what the Almighty had planned. Okay. Maybe that. But what I'm saying well, is, see, they wouldn't like that. No, 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 because they're like, no, we can do something Here's to stop the point. this. We can just go. What back are we to, gonna do? We we, we quit flying. We uh, we get rid of all vehicles. We all fossil fuels. We so quit we using those. We, we walk. Walking. No oil. No gas. Everybody being sick. Yeah. Do all of that. Just but remember this. You say, well, you read. Peter the Apostle, what he said in Second Peter chapter 3, the earth and all, everything in it, the cosmos is leaving here. Then, we, then he was quoting the Hebrew writer, Hebrews 1, it's going to leave here. It's going to wear out. It's wearing out right before our very eyes and all our scientists that believe that. Well, I, then I read 1 Corinthians, the earth in its present form is passing away. But I wasn't done with that if you want to hear some more. Here's Isaiah the prophet. How would he have known about the second law of thermodynamics? Because he said... Isaiah 34, 4, all the stars of the heavens will be dissolved. Well, when you dissolve all the stars in heaven, you say, whoa, watch. The sky rolled up like a scroll. The Hebrew writer said it's rolled up like a garment, a discarded garment. The prophet Isaiah said the sky will roll up like a scroll. And the starry host, all of that, those bright lights you see, the planets, the stars, the, the, the galaxies, all the starry hosts will fall like withered leaves from the vine, like shriveled figs from the fig tree. Uh, it's like in my speech. I say, you might ought to do it. <clears throat> Are you? You're, I gotta go figure out who that is. <laughs> you're gonna uh, have to Google now. I don't oh, see trust me, how there's plenty out there about her. Yeah, I don't see how I, you don't know about your because I, mean, I don't I don't what I don't, I'm where did you hear about it? It's I, I watch the news. I, you I don't know, watch I, the news. I follow social media. Depressing. Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah fifty one. You want some more? Go lift ahead. lift up your tapped. eyes. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. 
So everybody tonight, look way up and look way out. You say, what do you see? Look at the earth beneath. Here we are. Look at both of them. The heavens will vanish like smoke. We're seeing them vanish right now. A slow process, second law of thermodynamics. How in the world did Isaiah the prophet know this? The earth will wear out like a garment. That was said 750 years before Jesus came and the book of Hebrews written in the first century. Watch. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants. Are y'all ready? All you folks who don't believe that God's going to do this, its inhabitants will die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. Better make sure, Al, you're on the right side of this thing when it comes to looking at the cosmos and wondering why it's leaving. So it's like when you see a fallen star. I mean, you probably think the same thing I do. What are you thinking when you see a fallen star? Make a wish. No, I'm thinking I'm glad I wasn't on that planet. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know where you are going with that. It, hey. Well, I just figured <laughs> it burns everybody out. thought the same thing. I thought. You're exactly right. You know somebody what was a million miles away from us, and we dissolve Billions. or roll Billions up. of miles. I'm just saying. <laughs> and you see the earth going, you'd think. Well, I'm glad I wasn't on that planet. You look like and see a fallen star, Jace. You say there's a pretty good message from heaven. Yeah. Well, that's what I there was There goes saying. that one. Some serious cow But it's nothing that for God. That's all going to do that. To create. He can create this stuff. He, but everybody's so, like, well, that's just sad. And by, the way, no, so, I, by the way, Jace, the first law of thermodynamics, I gave you the second one. You, y'all are looking at me saying, how in the world did he come up there? I don't know. For but a look, C plus man, you're impressed me with your hey, science. I'm just saying, the some first studying. law, you know what the first law of thermodynamics says? Tell us. Matter cannot be created or destroyed. So they start. Unless you're God. <laughs> unless you're God. But they don't add that. Oh, well, I <laughs> You did. added that for emphasis. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is you read the first law and you say, well, why in the world we got all this matter? It came from somewhere. Well, and we know this, it is, it is losing its energy. And they come up with the second law of thermodynamics. It's losing its heat, its energy. So today on the Unashamed podcast, you've got the climate uh, believers and climate change, mm-hmm. climate change yep. believers. Yep. And then they say, if you don't believe what they're saying, they're, you're a climate denier. That's so, the no God crowd. That's the, right. So what we say is we've added in a third option. We are creator controllers. We believe there's a creator that's controlling right. the whole situation. That's right. Which is why we don't get too bent out of shape. Jason didn't even know about you know AOC, so he ain't worried about I'm it. I'm just wondering how somebody I've never heard of, you already have a nickname for, which I don't even know what that means. What is AOC? You never answered the question. It's her, it's the letters for her name. Oh. Alexandria Ocasio. Because it's hard to say. She's like a far three, left. She's a little she's far left names. chick. She's cute as a speckled pup in a red wagon coming down a long hill. But the bottom line is she doesn't have any sense. She's senseless and her faith is not in So Jesus she's a Marxist. What would you say the difference between her and Bernie Sanders is? One of them's cute. One of them's look like an old craggy old guy that... You know, both of them, uh, you know. I know Bernie Sanders. She's a lot better looking than Bernie, but both of them are on the wrong track. <laughs> so anyway. No look, God. It's the perfect segue. We didn't know we were going to talk about this today, but thank you, Dad, for bringing it up. Uh, where, we, where we are in our sort of storyline in the Old Testament is we're at the period of the judges. And I think it's a perfect discussion to lead into it because – you think about it, God is the ultimate judge, right? Is that where we got the idea to have judges? James when Ford. was that when was judges written? Oh, you're talking about, well, you're, back in the historical era, you're talking about right after Moses. So this is this okay. is a pension. Give me a, a give me for mankind. They always want twelve hundred years. Over before under Christ. a thousand. Over a thousand years. before Christ. They always have looked to to human beings to lead them out and lead us to the promised land. This is about so tell us what the judges role. So here's the I deal. Mean, if you read the a book of judges, which I did last night, I mean, it's rated R. Yeah. Oh man. Is oh, it ever? It's just rated R. It's, they made a movie about judges. You'd have to, cause you're talking like about, your you're talking about violence. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sexual, sexual conquest. It's hey Al, look at modern day and tell me how much has changed. Not much. So here's, I mean, they, they're passing laws that supersedes the Supreme Court, supersedes the Supreme Being and says, you know what? 
I know for 7,000 years, y'all thought that a marriage between a man and a woman, but that's not true. Anybody can marry anybody, same sex marriage, all that. That's all. That, that's no problem. They just take the law and they butcher it and it supersedes what God says. And therein is the problem yeah. all well, the way back to Samuel that's why and the judges. It comes back to human anatomy. And look, look, there's, there's and a yep, story okay. involved in the judges, which I didn't think about until you just brought it up, but there's a, where a guy comes in, he's got his concubine, which is a whole other thing, but it was basically a, a wife. Yep. And so this guy, takes her into his home and then they basically, and this is crude, but this is exactly what Jay's talking about. This is in the Bible. It, they gang rape her and mm. murder her, you know? And, it, and so God brings it's down. It's still judgment. happening. It happens. And so God brings down yeah, judgment. I wasn't pleased. I mean, the whole bottom line, the whole reason we were talking about this climate change and all this is then once this climate does change, which is a big fire and everything melts, Yep. Then we all stand for God. Right. That's Whether right. you believe or not, <laughs> at least that's where you'll be. At least we're on the right side of this thing, biblically speaking. Right. That we have hope, <clears throat> and without right. your, your well, then fear you of have, God and the knowledge of God, you, you so, have no hope. I mean, then you have judgment, which we believe as Christians. You know, I mean, Jesus judges us on the cross, and he he deemed us not guilty. Correct. Even though we were guilty. Right. That's why he came. Grace but, is, a, is so, a wonderful thing. But for those who are surprised when he comes back, well, that that's going to be a bad time to be surprised because then you're basically guilty. We look forward to these days, but they look at it with fear and trembling. Oh, that's right. Well, think about it if you're the guy in the story I just mentioned, and then judgment was brought down on him, his house, his entire tribe. Remember where we are in the historical story? Remember we had Joshua. They go in. They conquer the land of Canaan. They basically set it up in a structure where there's twelve tribes. So this is what I would call a, yeah. you know, a, a tribal. You know, we still got. I thought tribal. it was thirteen. Oh, yeah. or- well, it is thirteen because Joseph. Remember, he blessed his two sons, so there were he split his into two. So it's actually thirteen, although it's called the twelve tribes. But that's is the that reason why, why they got the that thirteen's unlucky. Probably so. I hadn't yeah. thought about that. You always hear him say twelve, but you're right. It was. Technically, it was 13 because Joseph's yeah. two sons. Yeah, probably, Manasseh. probably true. Yeah. So, anyway, well, I mean, we got judges from the Bible. We got, you know, everything else I can think of. Every movie that you see that has anything to do with good or evil, it came out of the Bible. Oh, always. You know, you know what strikes me in the Bible when you read, read Genesis chapter one? He separated the waters from the water. You got atmosphere up here. That water, a lot of water up there. And then you have the oceans down below. Well, that space in between is called sky. You say, what do, you, what do y'all call it? We say, we still call it sky. <laughs> and the land is called dry ground up here. Let dry ground appear. He said, what do you call that? He said, we're going to call that I am. God said, I'm going to call it land. Well, that's been whenever it happened to now. You say, what do we call it? We say land. land. I'm like, y'all y'all borrowed the terminology of what these things are from God. Right. How come you're saying there's not a God? Right. You're calling things what he called them. If it's not the sky, what are we going to call it, Al? That space in between <laughs> us and outer space. If it's not sky, what is it? I just have to come up with a new name. I'm sure. I'm sure some of the climate changers can come up. So, so in the storyline, here's what happens. You you basically have this period. I call it the wild wild west of Israel's history because mm-hmm. you've remember you've had these kind of Moses to Joshua. We had a clear leadership, and now all of a sudden, who's going to lead? And so yeah. that so so these people would raise up, and they would be a judge, is what they would call them. And they were judicial, obviously. They were military. Most of them were military leaders. Some of them were spiritual, and some of them weren't. Uh, Not much has changed. Not much has changed. And so you see that same kind of deal today, which is what I find interesting. Sure. You know, when you look at it and you look at certain parts of the world, you know, we're kind of used to having, at least until now, this current era is kind of crazy, but where you had some stability in your government. You got places in the world, you go to Afghanistan, and it's all tribal guys and that group over there has got the, strongest the Taliban. Will survive. The strongest will survive. The, and usually it's a bad situation. The biggest stick. This is exactly the biggest right. stick. That's who rules. And so that was the period By the way, they were talking about. Not much order. In fact, not much law or order. Or you integrity. Know, law and order, you say it's a lawless Honor, land. Integrity, oh, respect, love, anything. joy, peace, patience, right. kindness. You say nope. Doesn't exist. It's like the mistreatment of women and, you know, it's just ridiculous. 
So when you think about that, here was the here was the nature of this period. You tell me if this sounds familiar. You had peace. You had a time of peace. Things were good. Everybody's taking care of each other. Nobody's warring and fighting. Then you would have the abandoning of the principles, remember, that God had instituted. So all yep. of a sudden you got people doing their own thing. It's beginning to sound familiar. Then you would have oppression. <clears throat> Some neighboring <clears throat> tribe or neighboring nation would come in and control them. Then you would have repentance. The people would cry out to God. And then guess what? You'd have deliverance. You'd go on to the next judge. This was over and over and over I'm again. I'm 73 years old, Al. You say, uh, Dad, you're older than we are. You're 73. How much have? How many times have you seen warring neighbors and they come together since you've been here? I, Al, I don't remember a four or five year period not over that long, when there wasn't a war with some of our neighbors somewhere on this earth. You're like, it's just one. They have a word for it now. The news media, Jace, this is good information for you if you can get off that, uh, the, the, the computer, uh, the stock market. They, they said, what's the word? It, they call them endless wars. Well, we've been in endless wars ever since I've been on the earth, and that's about 73 years. You're like... It's one after the other, after the other, it's, after the it's other. It's endless wars in your own neighborhood. And Al, <laughs> you're talking about the time, how many years before Jesus was this? It's about 1,100 years. 1,100 years before Jesus. You say, well, what has changed on planet Earth regarding wars and death and misery right. and immorality and idolatry? You're like, good. So, not- look, I want to I want to kind of focus this down a little bit more because, Dad, <clears throat> you raised us the right way. I mean, you did. I mean, you weren't a Christian for the early part of my life and so, a little bit of Jason's, but you basically instilled in us the principle of do the right thing, don't steal. I mean, there were a lot of principles. So the blessing of that for me and Jason, I may be wrong, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, we've never stood before a earthly judge. Well, I have a couple times. Oh, well, share, because yeah. this, this is news. Well, one of them was... Uh... You know when so we're not I, talking about the stuff on the show, right? Yeah, this, Duck Dynasty. Oh, good when night. We got up there, but I it I, I figured out that uh, you know the TV show had kind of set that up. But that judge, who was a real judge, he didn't find anything amusing about that show. <laughs> he was serious, wasn't he? Uh, he got into full. You know, he's looking size. Hey, hey, hey you know, we give me a ticket, whatever, because we had you know you couldn't park near a bridge and and go fishing. But I could tell he was looking like I'm not amused, you know, because if somebody's not amused by Sai, that's pretty impressive because yeah. he's amusing. Yeah. But it it made me realize this guy's heard so much. Can you imagine what this the crap this guy has heard every day for eight hours? And he's like, lies I'm not. Did you break the law? Yeah. Guilty. <laughs> there was no way to be impressed, you know. Yeah. Forgiveness was not even an option. No. no. So we know that uh, we've talked about this for on our podcast that uh, kids, uh, what they're facing on the internet, which is another reason, Dad, why you you've chosen just never get on it. Uh, unfortunately, for the rest of the world, it's a reality that we deal with. And so a big problem is, you know, kids are faced with Snapchat and Instagram and all these things out there that introduce a lot of negativity and a lot of really tough things. Jace has talked about it openly. Yeah, I'm going to get this. In this his is own family. Circle, right? This is called Circle Home Plus and, and the Circle app that you get. And it's interesting because it's an app that you get that helps you control all the other apps. Tell me but how to do it because I'm doing this. Basically, I'm- you control the content and you track everything, all your devices, laptops, gamers, Smart mm-hmm. TVs, everything. So what you do is is uh, you get thirty dollars off Circle Home Plus when you visit meetcircle.com. Meetcircle.com slash unashamed. That's how you're gonna get it. You enter unashamed at your checkout, you get thirty bucks off, and you're gonna be able to get the app that's gonna help you control the content. So this is important, Jace, okay. for you and I. So, so once I get in there, they'll tell me where to go. They'll tell you what there. to do. Meetcircle.com slash unashamed, save thirty bucks. And start controlling the content of what your kids are seeing. It's important. Yeah. We're going to do it. I, I, I see nothing wrong with finding out the content of what your children are seeing or watching. 
Yeah, there's you, no. I told. I've told all my. That kids, is a good idea if you're going to fool with cell phones. There is no privacy. You know, you hear these people. They're like, well, you know, the kids need their privacy. No. When I was in private as a kid, I was doing something I shouldn't be doing. That's yeah. right. So public you, is better. I said, we live. Children. I tell my kids all the time. We live in the light. That's Whether right. you make mistakes or not, I want to look at it. And then when you make a mistake, you say, "I'm sorry, my bad. Let's move on." Okay. Meetcircle.com slash unashamed. Enter unashamed. You get 30 bucks off. Do it now. It wasn't so so I, mean, I thought about that, how earthly judges in our system, just what you said, what they have to listen to, yeah. that, that they're trying to meet out, you know, by the law. But at the same time, do you ever have, you know, do you show mercy uh, to some, not to others. I mean, ha- you know, that's a. I tough- mean, I've been in a many a courtroom where it was somebody we had brought to the Lord or somebody we were praying for, you know, and they asked me to come up there. And I know you've done some yep, of that too. And so you I've sit there them. and you listen, and it's but it's the same thing. You walk away thinking the same thing. They don't care, right? I mean, they're just trying to look at the law, look at what was done, and for the most part, make the right decision. But they're emotionless. And as far I, as that. Well, I'll just say, uh, James, when he's talking about how we should view our neighbors, uh, brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you're not keeping it, but sitting in judgment on it. And he makes a pertinent point for any time frame from Samuel all the way to here, there's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. Therefore, he said, but you, who are you to judge your neighbor? So we present them, point them to Jesus. You say, but as far as their their status before God, it's up to them to make the call, and we're not to judge them. We just say, here's what I believe, and here's why. And you point them to Jesus. He loves you. God loves you. He's died on a cross for you. He'll remove your sin and raise you from the dead. Take it or leave it. I hope you take it. Right. And but, we just do that and we move on. So that's but the about bottom it. line is you have to have some system like this in place to have law and order, which really is God do. introduced it through his chosen people. But then when you fast forward even to 1 Corinthians 6, you know, they were having these lawsuits among the believers. And oh, yeah. Paul just like shoot them cha- out. Over I mean, that. chastised them. Yeah. It's like where it's like now. If someone was a believer in Jesus, you know, I I, I wouldn't be able to sue him based on what I read. I couldn't in, do in it. First Corinthians. I six. wouldn't do it. I see people do it, and I'm like, you know what? Okay, but I'm not doing. it. I'd take the loss and move on. Yeah, right. just just because. Now I realize why you have the system. It's like what we're saying when you're in front of that judge and those courtrooms and even that you would think it would thwart all crime and but you see our country and you're like can you imagine it without it oh oh man it, then you're back into the afghanistan well, right. of the world and- my experiences from being in courtrooms and testifying usually it was in some uh sort of situation where it was a custody case or whatever because i i tried to avoid it but sometimes you get pulled in because it's somebody a member of our church back when i was a preacher and so, but I know that the one common theme I noticed is these were family matters, everyone I was involved in. Yep. And the judge who had the ultimate say, the vibe I got from them and the speeches I heard from them was, can't you do this on your, why are you taking up my time yep. to deal with your family issues? That's right. You should do this on, I mean, they, she, she or he, because both judges would usually chastise the families. Like, you should deal this on your own. Yeah, like, just think You of shouldn't what, be before me deciding who gets custody well, over Well, like, this. most of it's probably divorces. And most and, of it you know, was, right. I was going to mention that. Just think ugly. about the divorce courts. Oh. All the trauma. Well, instead of when people make poor choices and you right. finally end up in front of a judge, yeah. you're like, boy, you, you carried this way too far. Should have sat down and worked this out between you. Well, and let's face it. Part of the problem of this is that you, if you step down one back, a lot of this. I been say the lawyers make money, <laughs> and the court system makes money. But I always of said the they they have to put the law before the person because that's what they're do, there to do enforce the law. You know, as Christians, 
we kind of do the opposite. We put the person in front of the law. Sin, I mean, sin yeah. is very right, exactly. Our yeah. sin is very costly. Oh, man. All the way up to the <clears throat> wars we fight and the wars with the families and the wars with the neighborhood. Legal system. The legal system. Sin is extremely uh, uh, expensive. You, expensive. So, so Dad, tell this, I want you to tell the story. I want the audience to hear this because one of the things that has really stuck with me through the years, we had a, 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 a brother, his family, great family uh, that we loved our church, grew up with us uh and one of their sons their youngest son and willie were best friends and they were african-american family, the african-american family and so it be important so he went off to college problems. and he went off to college and he's a basketball player great athlete uh went down south louisiana got in with some of the wrong crowd once he got to college but a, a wonderful kid with a great heart we all agree with that and his family yeah but he he made the decisions that led he did. to this. Poor that, choices. Yes. Got, got into no the doubt about drug it. culture. And somebody convinced him down there if you're going to you know, be able to. I don't to, think he was doing drugs. He just decided to make money. Well, he was uh, hanging out with that crowd. Right, and so they right. convinced him, look, you can make some easy money. They got him for transporting drugs across the state line. That's right. You go down well, to Mexico. It was, it was like 18 wheeler load. Right. There. You go down to Mexico. You pick up the drugs. You come back. We give you cash. And so he became convinced this was a good idea. He gets he gets pulled over. He gets arrested in a small Texas town, and then obviously because of the level that now he's a major drug trafficker, even though he's never been convicted of anything as far as I know his whole life. Well, yeah, it's right. like that movie, uh, The Mule. That that right. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. He's basically doing that. He's doing that, and so he's down there. He goes through his trial. And then there's a segment where people can speak to his defense and his family because now we're at the sentencing phase. He's convicted. And so you and mom and Willie went down and joined some of his family from here to speak on his defense. The the boy and the young man you knew, not necessarily the one that got into trouble. So tell about that, what that was like. Because, I, I mean, I, th- I find it really fascinating that you were attempting mercy and yet being a law guy – how did that? How did that? What happened? I mean, how did that? I basically play out? understood that he was guilty as charged, and I, I, I said, I'm not here because the prosecuting attorney said, Mr. Robinson, are you interested in justice? Because he was mad that you were testifying, a famous right. person was testifying on I this. I said, I am all for account. justice. He said, That's what you're seeing take place here. So why would you come? and speak on behalf of the one we're going to mete out justice to. I said, oh, I'm not asking for justice here. I'm asking for mercy here. I know what justice is going to do for him. Right. I understand. Rightfully so. Yeah. I you- said, I'm just asking for mercy in his case since this is his first offense. And the and guy said, well, whoever, and- you think this, <clears throat> whoever you think this guy is <clears> – <throat> He started running with the wrong crowd, and he's not the same guy that was raised with your son up there in North Which Louisiana. is true. Which all is the, true. All this is true. And all by the way, true. he was 20- – The judge was just sitting there stone-faced, and you say, how much mercy did the judge give him? A zero. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, My speech he, did, he, did him no good. He was 20 years old, and he was facing a 25-year federal sentence yep. for drug trafficking, and he got the full 25 years. That's right. But he, he served – 12, 12 and 13, a half. 12 and a yeah, half. He served half of it. Good Willie time. was waiting on him when he got out 12 and a half years later. Hey, I tell you what, he's been a pretty model citizen since. Yep. And when did he get out? Seven oh, he's been ago? out no more years? than that. It's been about 10 or 12 years ago. He worked for Duck Commander for a while. Willie yep. gave him a job. Or does he still? No, he didn't work for us anymore, but he did. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. You know, and, and we love him, and he's still a, you know, a dear friend of ours. But I just. This, that story, the idea that you seek mercy, but some the judge has the ultimate decision. And look, when you walked out of there, it wasn't like you were like, no, this something is wrong no. here. This You weren't like railing against the system. I asked for mercy. They gave him justice. You That's know what's right. interesting? When he worked at Duck Commander, he told me, you know who one of his cellmates was while he was in prison? Our former governor, Edwin Edwards. He was in the same cell with yeah, him. In, in, in Dallas at a federal prison, that's right. Yeah, I thought that was fascinating. He said, yeah, I used one of his duck calls, he told. 
Paul that. <laughs> O-E-W-E. Yeah. <laughs> he was a boy. I the... signed the governor of Duck Hall one time. You know, he's a big duck hunter, you know. Oh, yeah. But, but you know what it told me is that, you know, prison, it, it has no respecter of persons. No. Yeah. You can have been the governor or you could just been some guy transporting drugs. You wind up in the same place and you're treated the same. <laughs> Get in line, shut your mouth. That's yeah. But I do think it makes a good parallel to the idea of what we talk about, that it only takes one sin to condemn us. When we have an awareness, we get to that point. It only takes one. You think, look at a guy like, you know, we're talking about like Paul and he, he just did this one time. He happened to get caught the first time out, you know? And so we're thinking, well, surely you'll see this, not really him, his character, but he did it. I never said, well, this is unfair. It's the first time I went with justice all the way. I said, I'd like to see some mercy here, but if you choose to give him pure justice, right. so be it. So my point is, for every person that has ever sinned one time, what you earn is full justice of the law. That is correct. Which the Bible says is death. Spiritual, spiritual separa- separation. Eternal all spiritual why, separation. This all happened so Jesus would come. That's a right. lot of them say, well, it seems like such a small sin. All I'm doing is you break the law right. and you pay. The problem with, I with see, your life. The right. problem I see fast forward now is you got too many churches acting as the judges, like an Old Testament judge enforcing the law. Too much of that. You're oh, correct. There's no doubt about it. You're correct. And, uh, now I get it. In First Corinthians, you know, we keep going back to First Corinthians because they had a lot of problems, but he waited in there. But you know, First Corinthians five has something interesting where we're not supposed to judge other people. You know, Jesus said it. Matthew said, "Don't judge, or you too, you know, will be judged." Because ultimately, he's a judge. Right. I think where's that James four yeah. or whatever yeah. says God some is standing have, at the, the some judge. Some people have, at have the door. questioned me, and they say, "But how could you be for a fellow, Donald Trump?" Who, to be the president of the United States, and you support him knowing he's such a sinful man. I said, I've been a sinful man in my life, and so have you. <laughs> yeah. I said, we all have sins. What do you? I said, well, God uses us despite our flaws. What we do yeah. is we show anyone mercy because right. we've been shown yeah. mercy. We forgive people quick to forgive because God forgave us. So listen, and we don't know the heart. That's so, right. So here's what James said. We've been talking about James 4. James 2, James said, Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. And the only reason that happens is because of Christ. I mean, that's the whole deal. Yeah. That's right. I, I would like to say this in uh, 1 Corinthians 5, I think, which is a lot misunderstood. He did bring up a situation where if a person is claiming to be in Christ, claiming to be a Christian, yep. and they're obviously doing something that is just openly and publicly immoral, yep. he's like, hey, judge him and kick him kick, That's right. kick him out. Does not be- judgment begin in the, in well, the family right. of God, right? It says, what business is it of mine to judge those outside the church? This is First Corinthians 5, 12. Well, the answer is, it's none of your business to judge them out. Are you not to judge those inside? Well, the answer there would be yes. Yep. What he's inferring. Right. God will judge those outside, expel the wicked man from among you. And you can read the whole story. I mean, he's like, he said, I, you know, I've written to you not to associate with people that are immoral or drunkards yep. or whatever. He's like, but I'm not talking about, uh, you know, people in the world because you'd have to leave the world. He's like, but the ones that are claiming to be, you know, in yeah. Christ, in your fellowship, there's doing, and we all know from, from studying this, it's something openly and publicly maligning who Jesus mm-hmm. is. And they're, they're not caring that they're right making Jesus look bad. So yep. with anything, there are exceptions. I mean, if you want to call that an exception, I don't know how you would describe that. Generally, yes, we're not supposed to judge people. You're not supposed to look at, you know, the speck in your brother's eye when you got a plank in yours. and But there is something to say about a person who's claiming to be in Jesus, who's claiming to follow the moral compass of God, who's living the exact opposite in a public, open way. That's he a said, lifestyle. Yeah, you go to them and say, hey, what are you doing? He didn't make a mistake one day and you, you weed him out. He lived like this. Well, right. You're just like, be honest. If, you know, that's why I respect a lot of people out in the world more than I do people 
some people that go to church because at least they're honest and you know where they stand. Yep. You have someone claiming to be, you know, a follower of Jesus and they're living the exact opposite and, and are don't care. There are plenty of texts yeah. that say with certain individuals based on their behavior have nothing to do with them. Yeah. Plenty of verses that say that. That's exactly right. So anyway, uh, good discussion. Uh, out of the period of Judges, I think we show kind of in that larger narrative that we still live that life every single day. So, I, I mean, I guess our challenge to our audience is that you want to live in such a way, I don't fear judgment. No. Because Jesus says, I am the judge and I'm a follower of him, so I don't really fear that. I don't fear that in my everyday life because I try to do the right thing. I'm looking I'm not forward. Perfect. To the end of yeah. time as we know it. Exactly well, and right. we have to have this system on earth. That's why it's so important for me, you know, having a conservative president when he elects judges, because you, you need these people shaping. Right. That's how one our of Donald Trump's run. strong points. He so put a lot of federal judges strong and I am thankful for it. Right. Oh, Which, yeah. by the way, in judges, uh, you know, one of the most famous judges was a woman. Deborah. That's right, Deborah. Yep. And, uh, so it just shows you that her husband was a military guy and she was a spirit. They did it as a as a husband and wife team, which as is much really as, interesting. You know, people, judges four, check that out. Yeah, That's malign uh, women. You know, from right. their perception of what their role is. I mean, hey, they're women leaders. God, God was for. He didn't apologize for it. it I, I think it basically says she was the judge over all of Israel. Well, and we talked time. about this in a former podcast, but in that woman judge was ruling over that courtroom where that, that brother of the murdered person offered mercy and forgiveness to the his brother's killer. Mm -hmm. That judge was sitting there and she let it all unfold, which a lot of judges wouldn't have done that. You're talking about and she but yeah. I think she was so compassionate in the moment. She allowed that to happen and then gave the woman a Bible, her Bible. Yep. To take with her to jail. Here, you need to read up on this, and you'll understand about forgiveness. Yeah. So, anyway, pretty powerful stuff. Uh, next time, we're gonna we're gonna shift into the new era of what's coming for Israel, and that's the king. Uh, and we've got some good stuff to talk about that as well. And we'll talk about the kingdom for a while. So, next time on Run of Shame, we are so glad you're watching and listening to the Unashamed podcast. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. That's going to keep you up to date with all the new episodes, and it's also going to let other people find out about our podcast. So keep spreading the word and watching and listening to Unashamed with Phil Robertson.